And uh, here we go. Are we live? Uh, theoretically, yes. Hey. And do we need like a Linus Tron no, logo no, in, in the corner? Hold on a second. Hold on. I'm working on it. I'm just getting that, getting that centered. Uh, get that cable kind of. Oh yeah, that's just. I don't like I'm happy everything works, but this doesn't look great. Yeah, I know, I know, we're working on it. Okay, so it's official. Pretty much everything about the WAN show setup here has been overhauled at this point. There are still a couple of things that we could do to improve it. In fact, I have a bunch of them listed out in my WAN show improvement ideas list here. Oh, wow. Um... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, maybe I deleted it. This is a long list. No, 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 not all of it is list. In fact, maybe none of it is list. Uh, ah. um, here we go. We could put padding on the table. Okay. So we wouldn't get as much audio reflection yep, off the table. Yep. We could put clouds above the set, yep. like uh, dampening clouds. Um, we could have rolling sheets of acoustic batting kind of around the camera on the other rolling, side. He means like on wheels so we can push them around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not like rolling thunder, yeah. you know, like... Um, <laughs> that's the well, best thunder impression I can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, great. everything else here oh, that's on my list we have already done. <laughs> what thunder goes whoop, whoop, whoop? <laughs> 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 like dubstep thunder. Look, I don't, um, <laughs> I don't make the rules about how thunder gets impersonated <laughs> or impressioned. Um, uh, either way, so people are already asking about the Casey Tron thing. Oh, okay. Well, that's a perfect, absolutely perfect first topic for the WAN show today. Yeah. Um, so we should probably explain like what was happening. Uh, yeah. For the hold on viewers. a second. Is is that even one of our? No. How do I even spell? K A Y? Yeah, okay, that's not one of it's our topics not. for the week, so we don't have a source for this. But before the WAN show well, it's not started. Them. They didn't do anything wrong. No, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, no. It's not, yeah, it's a, it just our, our uh, doc preparation team yeah. wouldn't have known anything about no. this. So before the show started, our channel was hosting Caseytron. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. maybe you could explain why our channel would have been hosting Caseytron. So I noticed this with my. Uh, Anyways, Twitch is doing this thing where there's auto hosting. You can have it so that when you're not streaming. We should explain for people who only really watch WAN show on Twitch what exactly hosting means first. Yeah, no, I'm getting into that. Oh, yeah. okay. So auto hosting, the idea of auto hosting is that it will automatically host other channels. Hosting is where it will show the video feed of another channel on your channel when you are offline. So the idea behind it is that if you were like super bros with someone, then you could set your channel to host their channel so that when you're not streaming, they get additional viewers who happen to be on your channel. It can make a lot of sense, especially for groups like Nerd Fusion. Mm -hmm. If one of the guys at Nerd Fusion is not currently streaming, they can host another one of their buddies. They're all a big team that are trying to help each other grow. That is very good for that. People like Kyle and Paul yep. host each other. That makes yep. tons of sense. They yep. collab all the freaking time. Yep. Um, people that want to help each other can do that, or your channel could do that just to try to keep your audience engaged. If you have people that stream in very similar styles to you, that's kind of what it's supposed to be for. And auto hosting is a way to handle all of that and do all of that with you without you having to go like into your chat and going slash host space channel name. You can just set up a group of people that you want to auto host and we'll do that just automatically. Now, Twitch changed something where it went into, uh, originally all of these settings were off by default and you had to like, you had to manually an host things. It was an opt-in, you had to manually yeah. host things. Then when they came up with auto hosting, you had to go put in the channels that you wanted to auto host. And then Twitch was just like, well, we want this to happen because. I just want to jump in and uh, like, I don't know, a 10th of the messages in chat are people setting up auto hosting for us. Nice. So you guys are cool. You guys are bros. Hell yeah. Carry on. Um, so and like it's actually really cool the idea of auto hosting. Yeah. But when like you set it up, it's really cool. Uh, For like your friends who might have content styles that you consider to be, you know, appropriate and like Similar related, or related and like cool or, for your audience. Yeah. I mean, for example, our channel is not flagged as a mature audiences only channel. 
Yeah, so and we probably shouldn't host ones that are mature audiences only. And like, so our what Twitch did is they made it so that everyone was auto hosting random pools of people. So our channel was auto hosting Casey Tron right before the show. Everyone showed up because WAN show is supposed to happen. We're late as per usual, but not like hey, way we too were late. not that late. We were late. We were like seven minutes late, which, which is, is actually a lot better than normal. Yes. Yes. But Thank we were you. still a little late. So and people often show up early either way. So people were here waiting for WAN, and then Casey Tron's there, and it's like, what's going on? And then she went on the forum, and then apparently she confused RAM and CPU or something. I don't know. I read something about that in the chat. I don't want to directly quote that. I don't. I, w I didn't listen to it. I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. Um, so yeah. Anyways, our auto hosting has been turned off. Yes, sir, and ma'am, and everything in between. Yep. And so, let's roll the intro. We're moving on. happen but today well oh, like okay. the business deal yeah i don't know <laughs> i have no idea but they're they're one of the sponsors of, of the wan show today yeah oh like actually yeah that wasn't a mistake cool okay yeah. Yeah. so um you know what i guess probably the best thing for us to do right now we're gonna have a full like upgrade vlog style video of all the improvements most of which you can't see right now the whole chat is like oh my god intro had sound <laughs> <laughs> but we have made a lot of improvements to Whoa, the WAN what? show. I'm just going to show you guys uh, some of the stuff we've done. So check out the desk now. It's like, okay, it doesn't look that tidy, but <laughs> trust me. It's a lot tidier than it used to be. Trust me, it's like pretty tidy. Yeah. Like this is just our laptop power adapters that are going into um, this, this power splitter here. So it's actually completely tidy other than like Luke's laptop, the HDMI cables that we each have because we can both screen share now. The uh, 10 keyless keyboard that Corsair hooked us up with. So I have a little bit more space for the keyboard, mouse, and laptop here. Um, also, you might notice none of the audio gear is there because it has all moved to the badass. Go around the monitor. Uh, yeah, hold on, I got there you this. Go. It has all moved to the badass retro server cabinet. So um, uh, none of this would have happened. Oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot like the most important piece. The WAN show PC. We made it great again. Oh. How RGB is that, my friends? How RGB on a scale of one to RGB? Well, six. Is the WAN show PC. No, th there's six RGB okay, fans. Okay, there are six RGB fans. Thank you for that, Luke. But I also have an <laughs> RGB mouse. And RGB oh, keyboard hooked oh. up to it. Is that RGB keyboard? It looks, yeah, it's an RGB it looks keyboard. Like, looks like a red. I just don't have it configured right now. Uh, but it's definitely RGB in its heart. OK. In its heart. That's, that's all they ask. Um, so none of that would have happened without Corsair hooking us up, without um, Focusrite hooking us up with all the new audio gear, without Epifan hooking us up with, see, check this out. What, do, you don't have anything incriminating on your screen, do you? OK, uh, cool. So we can no. do Linus's screen. We can do Luke's screen. Yeah. Boom. Uh, also, you're, you're in extend mode right now anyway, so um, yep. You sure are. Oh, I just and ruined it. you, you I ruined went to it. PC only. Okay, <laughs> I Luke's, fixed it. Luke's a little new. He's <laughs> a little new it. at this. Okay, he's he's still learning. <laughs> uh, so we got all that stuff. We've got a better WAN show streaming PC than ever before. It's got 64 gigs of RAM now, oh, six core processor. There we go. Uh, NVMe SSD boot drive. It's like dank AF. Cool. Super dank. I saw like it. I don't know if they can see. There's like the old WAN show. No, they can't see. No, they can't it's see. It's the anymore. old WAN show PC with like the RAM and heatsink just strewn on top of it, hanging out they're, in the back. They're just chilling. They're just chilling over there. See, there they are. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Peace. Peace, old WAN show PC. Later. Rest in, rest in pieces. 
all of that, you know. Yeah, so. Uh, so I'm super stoked. Um, we moved on. We have, I believe, and I don't want to jinx it, but other than our hideous table, we have completely moved on to the point where we shouldn't have any issues anymore. Yeah. Should we tell the story of the table? Sure. Why we have such an ugly table. Brandon wanted me to change the table. <laughs> Do you support Brandon's initiative to change the table? I don't think so. I like keeping the table. So who was the first person to work at Linus Media Group and use this table? Me. And why? Are there like <laughs> acid etched marks through the paint? You, you might have to show. Okay, them. okay, we're bringing back the webcam. Yeah. Also, we have a webcam now that's all that's gonna always be here, just as like a way for us to just show random stuff. I mean, obviously, it's not like color corrected or anything. But do you see the entire like edge of the table here? It's like. And you can see like the main bad spots, like here, and over there. Yeah, yeah. So that was that's all burning from like my wrists <laughs> from working so long. This is the table that the original Titan videos all came out of. That's which right. Which is like one of the most ridiculous pieces of work I've like literally ever done. Yeah, um, good old original <laughs> Titan. Uh, yeah, this this was my desk for a very long time, and the paint's like thin, and it's uh, isn't it an IKEA desk? It, so so the story goes even further story, back. The origin well. story yeah. was that um, we were starting up um, Linus Media Group, and we had no money. Yeah. Like like for us, budgeting for a gallon of paint to paint the walls in the garage was like a significant line item in our startup costs. Yeah. Um, so one of my old coworkers at NCIX, his aunt or something, was getting rid of some Ikea furniture. And I kind of went, ugh, Ikea furniture has kind of that stigma. And then he's like, no, no, it's old Ikea furniture. It's the good stuff. So this thing is like bomb built. Yeah. Like it has a metal frame under the incredibly heavy tabletop like it's still some kind of a composite but it's not like have you guys ever cut apart it's not like an cardboard ikea desk yeah. yeah yeah they have like corrugated cardboard inside them yeah i mean they're, they're light <laughs> yeah and they're actually very strong and this is not an ikea sales pitch but like it's a pretty cool technology you know we save materials and all that but like they light up like crazy they weren't built like, they're not built like this thing they're was. not good for fire resistance. So what we did was I got, again, it was a significant investment at the time, but I got a spray bomb of yeah, like yeah, kind of yeah, textured yeah. speckled paint with the idea being that this table can pull double duty because it was, oh, it was incredibly ugly when we got it. I think this beige color is the actual tabletop yeah, yeah. color. It was like an off-white. It's awful. So I was like, this table can pull double duty. We'll, we'll, we'll run our benchmarks with the test benches on it, and then we can also use this cool texture with this fancy paint I spent an extra $3 on to do, like, B-roll glam footage on it. <laughs> oh. So now we've obviously moved on from that, but yeah. the table still holds a special place in my heart. It's one of the first things Linus Media Group ever owned. And uh, we didn't pay for it, it was free. Did I, did I mention that part? They were I giving, think, giving them away so. for yeah. free. Yeah. So uh, that's the story. It's sort of epic. I mean, we don't need a replacement. Table. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's fine. This table is a reminder of where, where we, we come came from. from. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, nope. No, Brandon. <laughs> Bad Brandon! <laughs> All right. Speaking of out with the old, in with the new, the original source here is WCCF Tech, and they claim, according to the headline here, AMD Ryzen lineup and prices confirmed. Eight cores for as low as $320, putting Ryzen right competitive with twice as many cores and overclocking capability with a four, excuse me, we're up to 7,700K. Sorry, I, I forgot there was a difference. <laughs> oh, um, ooh, wrecked. Oh, okay. Real. There was there was a thing that, not to jump too far, but yeah. I think this might actually be an upcoming topic, but we'll get more into it a little bit later. Yeah. There was Intel saying that there's gonna be a 15% performance bump on the 8000 series chips. And a lot of people were brought up a graphic that shows like, yeah, and you said there's a 15% performance bump last time too. So 
Anyways, that what was awkward. A, I mean, what is a bump? <laughs> well, okay, it was in one specific benchmark. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was like more for their mobile chips or something. Oh, no. Was it like a video transcoding one? Is the onboard GPU it's better Sysmark? than ever? Sysmark, I think. Uh, okay, Sysmark can, is, like, try to find it is broad really enough that it's kind of hard to uh, tell how well it would represent the improvements. Yeah. Did you see me slip that in there? I did, yeah. Oh! So much shade. Oh, anyway, um, so the entire Ryzen CPU lineup has been verified and pricing confirmed through various online retailers. At least three different CPUs are supposed to be available on day one. And I gotta say, if I hated the name Ryzen before, the amount of hate that I have for the model numbers that go with it is an entire order of magnitude higher. <sighs> So they will include the Ryzen 7 1800X, the Ryzen 7 1700X, and the Ryzen 7 1700. So R7. It's like, I actually have a video. Um, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can see you if this comes You should make a video up. just called How to Name Your Product. Um, that's actually not a terrible idea. Not that many people would watch it, but hopefully they would be important people like Minlang Tan and, uh, oh, yeah, 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 Shaw, wide open internet, whatever. Thank you. I was playing whatever. games with uh, my brother and a friend of ours the other day, and they were both on Shaw, and their internet connection completely cut out multiple times while we were playing. And it was funny because you knew it was Shaw because we'd be playing, and then all of a sudden just boop, both of them are just completely gone <laughs> at the exact same time. Okay. That was great. So this video is all the evidence that I need to back up that confusing wow, that's naming so schemes. Many more views than I thought. <laughs> confusing naming schemes are a big load of bollocks that need to be gotten rid of. Oh, Nobody man. knows what a Core i3, i5, or i7 is. 5.6 million people. Seven. You can you could get I away could, with saying seven. I could say seven. Yeah. 5.7 million people had to watch this video to understand what the heck is a Core i7. And like apparently they needed it because the like and dislike ratio is like really strong. It has 92,000 likes with many of the comments being about how annoying my voice is, how I'm probably gay, and uh, what's one of the other really common ones? Oh, and how my earrings need to die in a fire okay. because any videos so all unrelated that I host that get big enough to get out of the circle. Yeah, yeah. get out of the like sort of people who kind of get it. Um, so so other than those comments, a lot of it is like, wow, thank you for this video. I had no idea this was a very confusing thing for me. AMD is making this even worse. What does seven mean? especially because most of the leaked uh, product lineup references that we've seen so far indicate that everything in the initial lineup will be seven. Yeah, I, I sort of hope that they come up with R5s and R3s just to like be totally horrible. Also- <laughs> Just because I'd want to watch the world burn a little bit. I mean, you already <laughs> have four numbers. Yeah. <laughs> you have seven, 1,700. Maybe that first number could mean something, and then the next one could mean something, and then the other two could mean something. I, and, like, again, this is, and they probably will have some horrible document that's like, what do the product lineup numbers mean? Um, so what do the model numbers mean, Intel? Intel actually has this. Here you go. Here we go. If you need this, you suck <laughs> at naming products. Okay? <laughs> Especially if we're talking about, here, this is all Xeon. This is all, really, this is all Xeon. They have an entire page about Xeon. Okay, Where, whatever. There's a consumer one too. Here we go. It's a separate page, okay? And like the thing is, it can change. If you need, if you need this, then you're terrible. Like, wh what is this? What is this? Why is the product line suffix in a different place than the product line suffix? 
What, why is the skew numeric digits moved over here? Why? What, what could possibly be a reason for this? Did they have a focus group? Did, did they have a focus group where, where people told them, oh yeah, you know, the way you were doing it before, that, that was really sucky. So could you maybe make it more terrible? Did, did the focus group say that? Because I think the focus group is full of a bunch of trolls. <laughs> And like, I love how they just add stuff in. Like that one's a mobile processor, sure. Okay, why does it just have letter suffix? I, they don't have more than 26 product lines. So, so why? Yeah. I mean, well, what would, what, what's 26 times 20, 26, okay? So 26 times They're 26. They're trying to get away with having what? HQ in there because it sounds like high quality. What is going in here? What is going, they don't have 676 product lines. So they don't need two letters. That's for sure. We know this. Also, these are skew specific digits. There are three of them. So that's 999. Okay, 999 times. Hold on. What, what was 26 times 26 again? 100, uh, 676. 676. Okay, so let's go 676 times. Uh, what was it? Not 999. 99. Yeah. Okay, they don't have 675,324 skews. <laughs> what do they need them all for? And that times three. Yeah, times, three different brand times i7, i5, i3, Pentium. Oh, Don't yeah, forget Pentium yeah, yeah. and but Celeron. That's a, that's a different modifier, though, because those are not... Those could be on different things. Oh. So, anyway, um, I will give Intel and AMD at least this much credit, okay? At least they change the product name when they release a new product. Yeah. The new product might not perform any better. At least it's not. It might be a rebadge of the old product. At least it's not like Intel uh, late 2017 i7. Because that would be worse. Oh, man. I mean, at least Intel. I was trying to explain this to um, Yvonne last night, my wife. Um, so I was telling her, hey, uh, Luke needs to borrow our Media Center PC. So if you and the kids are watching TV while I'm at badminton tonight, use the NVIDIA Shield. And she's like, oh, how do I hook that up? I've never done that before. And I was like, you just use the Harmony remote and you, you set, go play Shield. She's like, oh, where is it? Is it on your nightstand? And I'm like, because NVIDIA released the Shield handheld console called the NVIDIA Shield. Then they released the tablet and they called that the Shield K1 or Shield tablet or something. And at the same time, quietly renamed the Shield to the Shield Portable. Then making matters worse, they released their Shield Android TV, which they then just started calling the NVIDIA Shield. So I was talking about the Shield Android TV and she thought I was talking about the Shield Portable because she doesn't care about the Shield Android TV. Or just because she got lost in the product naming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Do we have an actual topic to cover today? Uh, probably. I, okay. I find this... Oh, right. The rise in the... the audience world. agrees with me, I find you ranting about random stuff far more interesting <laughs> than rumors about a processor that isn't out yet. But, you know. Okay. So back to the processor that isn't out. The 1800X is looking like it's going to be in that 6900K sort of competitive... Uh, price range. Wait, how much is this? No, 6900K is like double that. Cool. I've seen them on sale for like considerably less than that okay. as well. But you said, wait, 6900K. Yeah, so this Never is looking mind. like AMD is going to be in that sort of like the cheaper alternative that like performs yeah, this is, better. That's all considerably cheaper than 6900K. Yeah, that's like $1,000, isn't it? Yeah. So word bit, on the street is yeah. like half the price. And if AMD can be close to the performance, we are going to be looking at a very, very different playing field. Slightly over $1,000. So I, that's, I, that's slightly more of a discount than half the 95 price. watt TDP on this sucker? And they're quoting 65 watt on the 1700, which if pricing is anything to go by, looks like it's going to be taking on if they're targeting half the price. So that would be going after something like a 68 or 6700K. Whoa. Okay. As long as boards aren't totally unreasonable, uh, this is going to be one heck of an interesting rest of the year. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm continuing my skepticism until it is actually in a bench.
I've been yep. burned far too many times. So the WCCF Tech article speculates that the 1700 at 316 US dollars will be 6900K class performance. Let's see. Wow. It's going to come down to overclocking in all likelihood, but let's see how that uh, turns out. But for the majority of consumers, the non-overclocking number is going to be what really matters. That's true. So like... Yep. That's true. I'm very excited for both of those, actually. How Although, they both overclock and how they both perform without overclocking. What I'll say is this, that part of the fun has been taken out of overclocking for me. Yes. In the last three to four years. And the reason for that is that the chips are already clocked at like 4.4 gigahertz in some cases. Um, there's not that much headroom left. 4.4 Gs is like kind of a lot. Whereas if AMD comes in and says, okay, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna sell them at lower clock speeds, and we're gonna bring back some of the fun, some of the silicon lottery. Because right now you can expect pretty consistent results, yeah. give or take 300 megahertz on reasonable cooling out of an Intel processor. Whereas if AMD goes, okay, yeah, they're gonna be cheap. We're not gonna we sell put, them for this much. Yeah, we're not gonna like bin them close to the wire, and they're they're gonna overclock like a bat out of hell. Have fun. Some hey, might not. I might get into it again. That could be cool. I would love that. That would actually be a total blast. The overclocking game has been pretty boring, especially with like shots fired, but with like Nvidia cards right now. Yeah, Nvidia cards are about as little fun to overclock as anything. Holy crap! Don't even bother. I mean, GP boost. Thanks, bro. I mean, it's nice cool. that we're getting all the performance we can out of a product out of the box, which is great. But I sure wish that. Project Greenlight was artificial limitations. Um, yeah, I sure wish board partners were allowed to just like build yeah, crap. That, that, that was, power edition card. Which one? That got yanked. Remember the 660 Ti power edition? Yes, the I PE? do. Yep. Ooh, I still have one of those pre. Do you really yeah. pre nerf? Yeah. Oh. It's still awesome. <laughs> it's still really wicked. <laughs> Anyway, not one to take this kind of thing lying down. Uh, this was originally posted in the Linus Tech Tips forum by Numlock21. Uh, Intel is rumored to be creating higher clocked KB Lake CPUs to combat Ryzen. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this won't be enough. Hopefully not. I, oh yeah, I hope it's not enough. Yeah. For a quad core, so the, the rumored SKUs, overclock3d.net is our source here, are the i5-7640K and i7-7740K, uh, and it looks like about a 5% uh, bump here, and about a 3% uh, bump here. What are those gonna cost though? Um, also, it looks like we may get an i5 with hyper-threading, which would be very surprising to me. Um, and if Intel introduced these, I suspect they, okay, I suspect they're going for one of two tactics. Either they think that Ryzen's single-threaded performance is not going to be on par with KB Lake especially at this kind of clock speed. So they might be counting on Ryzen single thread performance at the clock speeds it can hit, not being able to compete with KB Lake at like 4.6 gigahertz. And they might be thinking, you know what? We can bring these in above the existing chips as, as gamer oriented SKUs. And these really will deliver the best performance in games, which is possible. Or, Intel is in full-on panic mode because with how inbred the entire IT industry is, I guarantee you there's working rising si Ryzen silicon in Intel's labs right now. There's absolutely no way that there isn't. So the other possibility is Intel is in panic mode right now, and these are gonna come straight in as replacements for the 7700 and 7600K, and they are getting ready for a significant price adjustment on the LGA 2011 three platform chips as well. I still hope it's not enough. So you hope that Intel underestimates Ryzen. Yes in spite of like the numbers on paper indicating that performance will be very good yes. enough that AMD claws back some market share, prompting yes. someone at Intel to go, 
oh, maybe it would be worthwhile to invest in CPU R&D for single core performance again. I think it would be again. very healthy if AMD is able to just like walk around as king for even like a few years. I don't think it's going to take a few years for Intel to I respond. I don't think it is either. But like that would be awesome because they could really use like the revenue for a while and like getting back into the mainstream conversation because as much as AMD is talked about by us and as well as the AMD content that we really tried to like crush good job at CES did market share is super not there. Yep. And if we could get closer to like 50-50 like it's a gamble oh how much like which person is going to buy what maybe in the diy space at least yeah i don't yeah. think i don't think you like know. if we could get new yeah. builds and planning on our forum to get closer to 50 50 with these chips out like that would even be really cool i want something to light a fire under intel because yeah. as scary as it is that part of me worries that this might be the last time we ever see a big push from amd i mean it's not like jim keller is going to go back and like save them again um, and he's working at Tesla now. Um, I, 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 I worry that if this isn't enough to kind of prompt Intel to get their gear into gear, get them... Their, get them into gear? Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> we got there. It's fine. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, I, I worry that we'll just never really, I mean, never is a strong word, but I worry that we will never really see um, a fire lit under those guys again. Um, so, so yeah, this, this feels like our chance. On the subject of fires, uh, this was posted by Suicidal Franco on the forum. The original article here is from Forbes. Um, oh, thank you for the quote of the day. Um, from Richard Branson. <laughs> a fire broke out at a Samsung battery factory. Wah, wah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just going to let that sink in I for a moment. I was going to say, we're just going to sit there for a sec. Yeah. <sighs> there isn't even like a ton to say. Uh, it was a samsung affiliated factory yeah. in tianjin china hopefully i said that right caught fire on the morning of february 8th uh not even that long ago pictures circulated on weibo weibo, weibo. a twitter-like chinese social media service i've heard of it before i've just only read it showing black plumes of smoke above the factory the fire didn't affect production a spokesman has said uh we don't have a quote in the dock at least about whether anyone was injured or died but we do have a quote about production so yeah, I'm assuming if production wasn't affected, probably no one was hurt. Everyone was fine. Let's yeah. hope. Let's hope that. Let's hope that like that's the only reason that that made it into the statement. Yeah. Um, but apparently it was caused. So this is actually good news by discarded faulty batteries. So it wasn't okay. caused by okay. by like pallets of batteries that were on their way to be shipped right. to Samsung or anything like that. <sighs> Apparently this Dodged factory one. <laughs> was within like the production scope of Note 7 batteries, so that's kind of funny. Oh man. But considering it was discarded batteries could be related to that. Yep, yep, could absolutely be related to that. And speaking of injuries and stuff and potential production losses, there is a different Chinese factory that replaced 90% of their human workers with robots, and they saw a 250% increase in production. Wow. The factory used to run used to be run by 650 employees and now only 60 of them still work there and most of them are there to ensure that the machines are still in working order. So it's probably more like the mill rights and stuff that were working there are still working there. Yeah. Pretty ridiculous. Robotic arms produce certain parts of the mobile phones that are produced at the factory at each station. Ugh. Wow. Uh, general man the general manager has said that the number of human employees could drop t as little as 20 someday. So they could cut by another third, taking 650 down to 20. That's 130th? Is that right? 130th of the workforce? <sighs> uh, wow. Apparently the pieces per person per month has risen from 8,000 to 21,000. That's that production increase we talked about earlier. 
And this company is far from the only one making the change. I mean, we've talked about things like McDonald's wanting to roll out restaurants entirely staffed by robots. Um, I mean, this is something that, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend that either the left or the right have it figured out at this point. No. But this is something does. that the politicians have to figure out and have to address. Welfare state is going to be a thing. Socialism is going to be a thing, or we are all going to starve. Yeah. Most of us will. Period. There will not be jobs to bring back when yeah. robots are doing them. And there's been, there's been a lot of talk about like, oh, well, every time that like some new major technological shift has happened, there's just been more different jobs. Unless like literally everyone ends up going into the entertainment sector, which like doesn't make sense. Um, unless it does. Unless it, unless it does. But then everyone's going to have to be like those jobs will have to be paid at ridiculously so high amounts. So let me propose something here. These robots build hard drives that power the cloud. The cloud, uh, hold on, let me think for a second here. No, no, I had, I, had, I had a way for this to work. Okay, the cloud pays entertainers. The cloud. To stream, so Amazon, okay? okay? Amazon's an example of a cloud provider that yep. owns Twitch. Yep. Okay, yep. so they pay entertainers but to play video games. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They pay, <laughs> they pay entertainers. Okay. To stream to each other oh. and use the cloud, okay? <laughs> the cloud people go buy food from more robots that, okay. that make food. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, those robots use that money to build more robots that build more hard drives. Okay. So the future economy is based on hard drives. Uh, yeah, Seagate and WD are totally <laughs> just gonna do great. <laughs> totally stoked right now. <laughs> and, and the idea that you have to be both producing entertainment and consuming entertainment at the same time. Well, we're gonna get real good at multitasking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm firing up Casey Tron stream so right now. <laughs> so, the, so there's gonna be streams of people watching streams of other people. Yes. It, which is probably already live, a thing. Live reactions. That, that's definitely, yes. And then there has to be live reactions streaming to reactions. The live reactions. Yes. Yeah. And streaming, streaming like um, critique of the state of our society yes. where like rea live reactions to people reacting live to something that's happening that a robot's doing oh. is like all that's left oh. for humanity at this point. Yeah. Maybe like factory simulator games will get really, really popular. And the whole idea of factory simulator is that there's so many automated factories with robots that everything that you could do is in existence somewhere. So it just, every time that you build something or like change something in the factory, it just changes you to a live feed of a factory that is like that. So factory oh, simulator man. just becomes like a simulation game. Yeah, so, um, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so speaking of getting paid to be an entertainer, <laughs> I fix it. Yay. Um, I fix it has a lot of stuff that is probably in my notes. Oh yeah, I fix it's great. We love I fix it. I, in fact, I think I know. I, I I was using the kit. That's why it's not there. It's in the um yeah that one and I think there's one there because I was taking something apart with it. Anyway, iFixit builds amazing tools for taking apart and putting back together and repairing and upgrading your electronics. They've got everything from their like complete one bag to hold them all solution that's got like their magnetic screw holder, their uh, you know microfiber cloth, their multiple different screwdriver sets. Yeah, it's okay. Someone's probably using it, it's fine. Um, all the way from like the whole bag down to the ProTec toolkit, which has all the little prying tools you need for taking apart mobile devices, suction cups, all that good stuff, down to this one, which is the Essentials. Oh no, one of the uh, guitar picks fell out. This is the Essentials um, electronic toolkit. 
So it's got one of their trademark spudgers, which is a poking and prying tool. It's got their old version of the, their driver with, uh, what is it, 16 bits. It's got their ESD safe tweezers. It's got one of their suction cups. It's got one of their, uh, one of their like knife things and one of their other prying tools. They're all great. These, these prying tools specifically, I love those. I use them all the time. These are the bomb. Yeah. The number of times that I have accidentally damaged uh, something by using a prying tool that like scratched it Lots. Um, and Lots when it wasn't that one. There's little things that they think of. Like, check this out. This is how you pull it out. Yeah. See? Because there's, uh, there's a little cavity there. So you can just pull it out like that. Pretty cool, right? So that's it. I recommend pulling out, and I recommend using iFixit toolkits. And you can save on an iFixit toolkit by heading to ifixit.com slash Linus and using offer when show to save 5% on a purchase of $10 or more. Also sponsoring the WAN show today, I think I do remember something about this, but we weren't going to do it until we finally upgraded the WAN show set. And we were actually using uh, their capture cards. So we worked out a deal with Epifan where I basically went, okay, look, we need capture cards that aren't terrible. Uh, in, the, in the upgrade vlog, you guys are going to see the capture card and microphone graveyard that we keep under the table here. Um, we had tried so many different ones. So I was talking to Epifan and I was like, look, we need capture cards that actually work. So here's the deal. You guys sent us some capture cards that actually work. We're going to use them for a couple months to ensure that we are 100% certain they actually work. And then we are going to do our part to get the word out there that Epifan capture cards actually freaking work. So here we are. We are months in. The only issues that we've had with them have been due to overwhelming a single USB controller, which we were able to solve actually a couple weeks ago by popping in a PCIe USB controller card. And now I am pleased as punch. You plug them in. They automatically detect the resolution and the frame rate. Everything is ready to rock instantaneously. The streaming quality looks great. And they, yeah, what can I, they, they just work. I mean, that was all I was really asking for. They just work. And they've got actually some recent firmware updates that make them better, uh, great for not just like professional video streaming and whatever else. They're great for PC capture as well. So they do 2560 nice. by 1440p now. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's cool. So they actually do like PC resolutions and stuff like that. Like they really do care. And they're a Canadian company. Yeah. They're like, and like, it says right on the made in Canada. I was like, they're on the ISS. I did not they know that. They use them for video capture. This is the second time I've told you on stream. Both really? Times you've reacted the same way. Oh, <laughs> I must have forgotten. No, yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> I just I find that part very cool. Anyway, they've got a fantastic lineup. Everything from the AVIO, SDI, HD, and 4K, which are the ones that we use predominantly. So if you've noticed the dramatic improvement in the quality of our video capture in our videos. That's thanks to Epifan. Um, that combined with that BenQ monitor that has HDMI pass-through allows us to capture exactly what's happening through multiple reboots because Epifan just switches resolutions on the fly. So if you like blue screen, it captures the whole experience, the BIOS coming up. Now we have ways to just capture everything and we can do it without interfering with the test bench system at all because everything's being done through an HDMI splitter that's built into the monitor and then it goes out to a completely separate system. I think, I think we may have love hugged their website and their website might be down. Um, sorry, Epifan. But if you Google Epifan on the ISS, you can find uh, a few different articles. One of the top ones is Epifan takes pro, oh, it's starting to load. It says Epifan takes pro AV uh, ab aboard the International Space Station. And another one is about how they brought it to a NASA tech fair. Um, so that's sort of cool if you want to read about like that. I, I like that a lot because I like space right. things and NASA and stuff. Anyway, they also have uh, PCI Express cards. So their DVI to PCIe Duo is another one that we have. That one is a little bit um, more manual in terms of the setup. So the one that I really recommend if you're looking for like a grab and go solution, I almost always have one in my backpack, is the, uh, the AVIO 4K is my personal favorite. We use the SDI for our camera because we've got an SDI camera. And then we use the HD for just my computer here because we don't need 4K for a 1080 stream. Yeah. But yeah, love it. Love everything about it. 
Check it out at epifan.com slash AVIO slash WAN. Remember to go there later as well if you're having troubles connecting to that right now. Yeah. It's good stuff, and it's actually not unreasonably priced either, which is great. If you just want to, like, pay a couple bucks more and get something that actually works. All right. Yeah, a bunch of other people are saying that it's out. <laughs> no. Sorry. Sorry, Epifan. Sorry, Epifan. We tried. Yeah. Um, all right. So in a surprise move that surprised no one, uh, this was posted by Crew Finweed underscore wins. Wow, worst Whoa. username ever award. You win. Um, NVIDIA announces their Q4 2017 results. Record profits. Yep. Record, record quarter. Gross revenue, $2.173 billion. This is up 700 million from their previous Q4. Unreal. Um, net income is at 655 million. I mean, this is just unfathomable numbers, hey? Yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. Poor AMD. They posted their results two weeks ago. 1.11 billion in revenue, loss of 51 million. And they're in the CPU and GPU market. Unbelievable. So yearly numbers, uh, 6.91 billion revenue compared to 5 billion the year before. Like when you're as much of a monster as NVIDIA is, I kind of go, yeah, how do you grow like 30% year over year? Well, apparently they figured it out. <laughs> um, unreal. Here's Crush their- Crush your only singular competition? Like I- Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. So here's their uh, quarterly revenue trend. Look at that. They were doing 1 billion and change. Boom, second half of this year, just on fire. I mean, remember too, NVIDIA is one of the biggest benefactors of things like deep learning, um, things like autonomous driving. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is NVIDIA's wheelhouse right now. And it is going, AMD is going to have to demonstrate to someone like a car manufacturer in a big way that they're still going to exist in five to 10 years if they're going to expect these guys to buy into the ecosystem. This is very, very important. There's more to it than just, well, AMD GPUs are great for this kind of processing too. If you're investing in building out the, like a supercomputer or something, there's no such thing as buying from a company that you can't trust in addition to it having great performance or great specs or whatever the case may be. Um, okay, so this was posted by Zemule on the forum. The original article is from the Steam community here. Very interesting. Greenlight is going away. Fascinating. I'm trying to I'm trying to find information on this. I believe the BMW autonomous car was running yep. Nvidia Tech in it. If I recall correctly, it was. But, but I don't I remember what it was. I suspect um, the, the car companies are funny. Yeah. Where a lot of the, they're not going to just say like the BMW X Drive, whatever the crap. Do uh, you want a, you want a GTX Titan XP or a, you know 1080, and that affects like you know how how many pedestrians you can dodge before you <laughs> smack into a wall or whatever. Like, it doesn't really work that way. They're just going to say with like, you know, Nvidia. It's really funny that Nvidia's like compute card, the Tesla would be a name that no car manufacturer other than Tesla would be willing to say. And even for Tesla, it would be like a really weird message. Yes. Um, yeah. But they might just say with NVIDIA, you know, uh, deep learning technology or something like that. Like there's going to be so, something else. So it looks like they're working with BMW, Mini Cooper, Tesla, Audi, and Mercedes-Benz. Okay. NVIDIA is. But they're not saying like exactly to what extent or yeah. blah, 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 blah. But like that's, that's their partners for autonomous driving. Um, so the new system that Valve's introducing will be called Steam Direct. It's expected to go live this spring. Uh, they've been dissatisfied with Steam Greenlight for a while. That's good, because so were a lot of people. Uh, Gabe, Newell, Gabe Newell described the system as probably bad for the Steam community. <laughs> I like how he's pretty blunt about things. Stated that the goal was to make Greenlight go away, not because it's not useful, but because they're evolving. So Steam Direct will enable developers to get their games on Steam without having to pass an approval process first. They will ask developers to complete a set of digital paperwork, personal or company verification, and tax documents similar to signing up for a bank account. Once they're set up, they will pay, pay a recoupable application fee for each title they wish to distribute. It's intended to dec decrease the amount of bad games submitted to Greenlight as a joke. 
Valve has said there are now more than 100 Greenlight games that have earned at least a million each, many of which wouldn't have been on Steam in the first place if it weren't for Greenlight. So they're not saying Greenlight, we should have never done it. They're, they're adding saying, some barrier to entry. Yes. And it's recoupable, so I'm not entirely sure what that means. All right. To be completely honest. It's probably like part of Valve's fee every time you sell a game doesn't exist until you've paid off that recoupable amount. That makes amount, sense. Yep. And then you're back in it. I mean, I've talked to um, folks like guys over at ExtremeSystems.org. They added a $1 fee to sign up for their forum. And they were like, yeah, the dollar is meaningless. It, it means nothing compared to the administration and hosting costs and all that stuff. The point is it's anti-spammer. Yeah. So someone has to submit a dollar with some kind of financial institution, and the spam was gone. And I'm sure it was, and that would help a lot too. We're not going to do that. No. Um, but like, I can totally understand the benefits of that. Yep. We like hurt because of troll jerks all the time. Yep. We have a pretty substantial mod team of awesome people because of all the terrible things that are attempted to be done on the forum, and we deal with them, and it's fine. All right, speaking of terrible things and dealing with it, you no. were not super stoked on Nintendo's game lineup for the Switch. Does this give you any hope? This was posted by Good Bites on the forum. I don't think a ton of people were super stoked on it. I like there's there's a lot of problems with their game lineup. Um, one thing that this is one thing about this that is good is mm -hmm. that third-party publishers seem to be coming to the Switch a lot more than they were with the Wii U. From 70 publishers. 70 publishers is pretty good. Um, a lot of the publishers seem to be liking the fact that it's mobile. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a huge draw for people. Yep. Um, mobile, but not a phone. You yes. don't have to go through Google or yeah. Apple. You don't have to compete in the App Store. Yeah. And the the even the cartridges are very mobile. They look like 3DS cartridges. They are not the same. They are not compatible. It doesn't work that way. But they look really similar, which is which is good because you can haul them around with you very easily. Uh, there's a huge amount of expandable storage. If you want to be a just downloadable title, there's a lot of titles coming to Switch that are only download uh, that will not be getting physical carts. So you're if you're playing those games, you're going to need to buy a big SD card real quick because the 30, 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, which part of that's going to be taken away by the operating system, is going to disappear fast. Real fast. Um, so expect to be adding the cost of an SD card to your system if you ever plan on downloading games. Yeah, sales of like 256 gig SD cards are going to be like... Money. And it, it will be eventually, when they exist, compatible with two terabyte micro SD cards. So, yeah. Um, that'll be a thing eventually. Yeah. But oh. yeah, it, it, it's better. The, the main disappointment that I had was the uh, first party titles, actually. Right. The fact that it's just Well, you Zelda. buy Nintendo for Nintendo. Yes, I do. Yeah. Do so you that's own, what made me sad. Do you own any third party titles for the Wii U? Some, but not very many. Right. Yeah, most of it's most of it's first party stuff. There, there are definitely a few that I own, but not very many. Like it's one of those things where for the Wii, I have to go back that far to the last time I bought a console. But for the Wii, I bought Super Monkey Ball for it, and I was just like, this is a lot more games than Wii Sports, but Wii Sports was free, and every single one of the games in Wii Sports has so much more replay value than these mini games in Super Monkey Ball. Do That's you... a huge issue and disappointment with the Switch. There is no free included game. Right. Um, and one thing that really helped the Wii was the inclusion of Wii Sports. Wii Sports is a great game. And this should really have 1-2 Switch included. Because 1-2 right. Switch, I don't think a lot of people understand the benefit and the fun of 1-2 Switch. It just looks like a stupid game at first. But if you like think about it for a while, it's actually really cool and a very good party game and a very good game for bringing the switch with you on the road because right. you don't have to look at the screen so just setting it up in tabletop mode and then playing while looking at each other right makes a ton of sense getting in getting people into gaming that is social aren't necessarily into games right it's super easy because you can play things that are more sport like um it makes a huge amount of sense but it is a full cost game it's like 70 bucks or something like Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they're going to move as 
many as they probably should be. Yeah, I don't know. Like, my son plays Wii Sports more than he plays VR. Yeah, like, and like Wii Sports brought everyone to the Wii. Yeah. My mom was super stoked by Wii Sports. Yep. Everyone that played the Wii was super stoked Wii by Wii Sports. Wii Sports is the reason that I own four Wiimotes, two nunchucks, yep. and uh, instead of one Wiimote and one nunchuck and like... Maybe a Pro Controller. Um, and, well, they didn't exist when I was still okay. buying Wii yeah. accessories, but a GameCube controller. Yeah. Okay. For like, so that I could have... And maybe a classic controller, like yeah. like that. It's it's the reason that I own two to three times as many Wii peripherals as I did because, totally. like, the in laws wanted to play too. Anyway, like one of the we'll the see. biggest excited things that I have about the Switch is getting one to Switch and then playing random like mini games with Emma. Right. Because then it's a way to make it so that like it's so the idea of making it so that you're playing a video game but you're facing each other is super cool. I don't know. Nvidia, uh, Nvidia. well, uh, Nvidia too. I mean, their hardware's in it. But uh, Nintendo is apparently very bullish on the Switch. So they're saying that, um, blah, 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 after the presentation, we receive more requests and more and more software publishers, et cetera, et cetera. New, unannounced new titles will be detailed in the future. Reiterated that Nintendo plans to ship 2 million of the new console worldwide by the end of March. That is uh, pretty aggressive. They're sold out freaking everywhere. Like, actually everywhere. Now, it's not that surprising, because Nintendo is kind of one of those guys that is totally down with, like, artificial limitation of stock. Um, but yeah. Like, the yeah. way that Wii's were arriving before Christmas that year was like, you guys had these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, just, you're just trickling them out because you're jerks. Yeah. But, uh, hey, I made a lot of money on that. Yeah. I got a free Wii, effectively. I was so... Have I told you my story of buying a Wii? No. I was, like, interested in buying one. I don't remember if I worked at Best Buy at this time or not. Um, but I was walking by one of the, like, end-of-aisle kiosks things. And an employee from the warehousing section just walks out with a Wii. And I'm like, oh, okay. Someone got one of their reserved Wiis. Plunk. Puts it on the thing. I'm like, okay. Just picked it up immediately, went and bought it. And I'm like basically 100% certain that was supposed to be someone else's unit. <laughs> and oh. it just like got screwed up in the inventory system. Wow. And they put it out on the shelf. I camped twice. I think I've told you that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, it was really fun. Like I did it with my wife. I we, used to like camping. We both camped out. That's the, I think it's one of the, I don't think I've ever camped for anything else. I've camped for quite a few things. Halo 2 was the, my favorite game that I ever camped for. Peasant. Did I, have I ever told you about that? So I, I had bought the like, magazine that talked about that had like the halo exclusive details in it and all that kind of stuff i think it was xbox magazine physical and magazine this I was had, a long time yes, ago okay yeah. <laughs> and i had read the entire thing many times like this was like a worn magazine by the time we were in lineup and they had a guy come out who's giving swag away based on if you could answer questions so i was the first person to put my hand up every single time i got every single uh answer right to the point where they started vocally being like we're not answering questions from you or uh, we're not taking answers from you anymore and then would scan other people and then they would keep on getting it wrong and they'd eventually come back to me <laughs> and then I'd answer it correct <laughs> it was so good someone backed oh, up to the lineup man. with a truck and they powered a big CRT TV off their truck and everyone was playing Halo 1 out of the back of their truck nice. that was sick really cool I actually nice. used to enjoy that stuff that's funny. That is one thing I miss about like physical magazines and manuals yeah. and stuff. Like my Final Fantasy VI manual, like I've read like all the stupid character backstories. Yeah. I mean, I was a kid yeah. at the time, right? But like yeah. I've read through all the different spells. Like it's 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 stuff like this that I guess you kind of forget about being a kid, where like you're still you know uh, you're still like at some early stage in the game. And you know you just you just want to like read about spells that like maybe someday terrible cast. And you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> My Morrowind Player's Guide, the original one that I had, the like cover fell off because I opened it and closed it so many times, and the spine is like damaged from being used too much. It's awesome. And then there's my Skyrim Player's Guide that I bought out of like expected need, which is still in absolutely perfect condition because you do not need a player's guide for that game at all because it's so handholdy. Old school Morrowind, like playing that game without a player's guide, you'll just miss a lot of stuff. Hmm. If you play the game with a player's guide, it's literally just a way to find content. And the way that the player's guide is written is like spoilers later. They'll like bring you to the quest and like make sure you can start it. And then it turns into like, if you need help, and then there's like spoilers at the end. So you can use it to find things. 
instead right. of just like walking you through the game. So I'd use it to like lead me to where I need to go to do something. And then if I got actually stuck, then I could check that, but it was rather uncommon and you just use it to lead you through the game. Uh, yeah, that was um, fun. Okay. So there's a couple fun things. Um, Yoda, the bill. So this was uh, originally posted by F.org. Yoda, the bill that would let you own and sell your devices is reintroduced by Congress. Wow. All right. Um, this looks like a bipartisan effort. Look at that. Blake Farenthold and Jared Polis. So uh, Republican and Democratic just reintroduced their You Own Devices Act, a bill that aims to help you reclaim some of your ownership rights in the software-enabled devices that you buy. What a friendly thing for the government to be doing. If a computer program enables a device to operate, Yoda would let you transfer ownership of a copy of that computer program along with the device. The law overrides any agreement to the contrary, like an abusive EULA, and you have the right to receive security or bug fixes if someone who also had the right to receive security and bug fixes passes the device along to you. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Um, That's like, I'm, I'm very happy that I have been aware of the idea that I might have to buy Blu-rays or DVDs of certain movies that I like. Because for the longest time, everyone was like, oh, it's just, it'll be on Netflix, it's fine. And Netflix is like dropping that super hard. <sighs> So, yeah. Twitch Communities Beta. This was posted by CP Yarger on the forum and uh, basically is a way for us to not be sort of on the, sort of in the gray area of people who are supposed to be streaming on Twitch. Because um, we don't stream games here. So basically. Dedicated to things like cosplay, drawing, painting, comedy, food, music, and uh, us. I guess. Yeah, cool. Uh, they're saying users can set up their own communities if they choose. We've heard from our streamers and viewers that they want the freedom to form specific groups. So some of these categories, uh, it initially contains hundreds of them, build on top of gamers' interests, and some of them just straight up don't. So inside communities will be a stream wall, which displays live content from creators who are choosing to broadcast to the community and broadcasters associating themselves with the community could give them more exposure for their content, allowing them to pick up more fans. Cool, good for them. Um, what else we got here? Eh, something about Cody. Oh, NASA built a chip to survive on Venus. Uh, something something, pretty 800 cool. degree Fahrenheit. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, na, 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 na. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, Google's uh, Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl, sorry, what is it, Super Bowl Liad? Lee as in like L-I, like Roman numerals. Oh, like 51. 51, is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, Super Bowl 51 ad from Google uh, wreaked havoc on customers who already own a Google Home system. This was posted by Tech Dreamer on the forum. That's pretty funny. So Google's use of OK Google uh, sends people's homes into a frenzy. So that's pretty, that's pretty funny, I guess. And on that note, because we started the WAN show somewhat on time, we're actually going to end it somewhat on time so that I won't actually be late for my, uh, for my class. Were you late last week? Uh, I, I was late, but mostly because of the snow. Uh, I left on time, but the snow was terrible. The roads were awful. Yeah. I got stuck on the hill right there. Um, I had to push people into parking spots when I went home last night. Like, more than one person. I rolled backwards down it. No, no, oh. I got stuck on the hill and like had to go back down it carefully and take a run at it and then wow. hope that the light would go green so I still had momentum as I was, yeah, it was really bad. Oh, um, man. Anyway, uh, oh, this. No. no, not this week. Not this week, Yeah. got it. Okay, so can we talk about the idea that we have? <laughs> Maybe let's just not. Boiler would. Yeah, I don't want Boiler to get upset. <laughs> Um, what we will do, though, is we will remind y'all yeah. that we do have an early access platform. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe I would talk about it during the uh, during the like sponsors part of the show. Like we could be our own sponsor for the show or something. Anyway, okay. If you're not already a member of the Float Plane Club, I just dropped a link in there where you guys can uh, 
What's what's cool on there right now? Because people haven't seen my personal rig update yet, which has been mm -hmm. on there for a while, but it's coming out on YouTube relatively soon. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff on there right now. In fact, you know what? An easier way to do this would be to just look at the calendar. So stuff that is on Float Playing Club but is not on YouTube yet. Backlit keyboards under twenty five bucks. It's a That's ten way a roundup. Cool uh, we've got Luke's personal rig update, code name Geo Dude. Yep. We've got Holy Bleep episode fifteen. The most hipster server cabinet of all time. It's pretty cool. We've got the introduction to the petabyte project where we show off the 100 drives and uh, go through all of our plans for how that's going to go down. We've got our backplates on GPUs worth it, uh, courtesy of Luke. Yeah. And we've got 40 gigabit networking under $100. So that's everything that's in the lineup for the next week or so. You guys can check it all out at Float Playing Club. And uh, no, there's no Scrapyard Wars yet, but I will commit to this. We will do another season of Scrapyard Wars this year. Right now, we... What? That's not the hugest commitment. That's a commitment. Yeah. Yeah. We will. So right now, Colton, Chelsea, and Nick are working on sponsorship for it because it is time-consuming and expensive. But oh. um, we will do it. And thank you guys very much for watching. We will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Watch this. Watch this, Luke. Watch this. Oh, and it has audio? Oh, dang! Epifan, bringing you better streaming gear since whenever they were founded. I fix it so I can fix it. <laughs> Even I can fix it.